Hi guys, this is Snap. In this video, we're going to be talking about our beloved carry skill, which is Penance Brand. But before we move on with actually the nitty gritty of Penance Brand, it's important to understand exactly how this skill works because it can be a little bit unintuitive. The skill is quite confusing at a surface level, so I can try and explain it the best I can. At its most basic level, it is a brand which you can place on the ground. Brands, I'm sure you know, you place on the ground and they jump to nearby enemies. But Penance Brand doesn't really do damage immediately. What happens is you place a brand on the ground and it attaches to a nearby enemy and starts charging up. When you put it on the ground and when it attaches, you can see it starts charging up, but it's not doing any damage. You can see that when it's finished charging, it will do a big explosion and do damage to everything in an area. Basically, this explosion has a gigantic more multiplier associated with it and is what really makes the skill really bonkers broken. However, there are a few ways to trigger the explosion prematurely. If you put down the brand and cast brand recall immediately, it'll explode when it moves or gets ripped off of the target. The other way you can trigger the explosion is by using a cluster jewel notable called Holy Conquest. This makes it so that every 0.3 seconds, the brand will jump to a new enemy and therefore cause an explosion. If I spec this node real quick, you'll see what I mean. Now, if I put the brand on the ground, it will jump between enemies every 0.3 seconds, exploding each time. There are a few things that affect the charge rate of the skill, and one of them mainly being cast speed. You can see that Penance Brand has a line that says increases and reductions to cast speed also apply to the skill's activation frequency. This makes cast speed an invaluable stat on the build. But keep in mind that more multipliers, such as Spell Echo or the new Hierophant's Zeal nodes do not work on this skill, only increases and reductions, similar to Crown of Eyes. It's very important to try and build up as many charges as you can before the brand gets ripped off the enemy with the Holy Conquest Cluster Jewel, therefore giving us the highest amount of damage possible. There are a few more reasons why this spell in particular is the absolute best for damage in a party, mainly that it is a Fizz spell, which means you can convert it and also scale it with Zealotry, giving you access to more damage ores to use. And typically, Fizz spells that are able to be converted generally offer the highest amount of damage possible. This skill in particular also just has an innate gigantic more multiplier, which can scale all of the flat damage on the auras. It's just overall an insane bonkers skill. There are a lot of complicated calculations that go into Penance Brand, given optimal breakpoints for certain energy thresholds, but bottom line, generally, you just want a lot of cast speed to get as much energy as possible, as quick as possible. If you've watched our video on the culling build, you know that all this build needs to do is just do a gigantic amount of damage while wearing southbound. So just keep in mind that you can't rely on any on-kill effects. Additionally, you do need elemental focus support in your links. This makes it so that when you actually cast the brand, it will jump from enemy to enemy, but leaving them at 1 HP. The Holy Conquest node has a lot of synergy when you're MFing with a Colbot, because while you have all of these mobs at 1 HP and the Colbot kills some of them like this, the brands will automatically start jumping to any alive monster, and as you cull them, it'll continue bouncing to anything that is alive. So the build kind of starts to play itself in a party, which is super nice when you're lagging and you have 10 FPS, and you don't really have a ton of control of your character. So having the automation that brands give you is a super, super plus for the Penance brand and as a carry build. So there are a few basic goals we want to achieve with the build. The first is obviously southbound, an elemental focus, so that you're not killing anything, therefore the coal bot can kill everything with all of its rarity. And then from here, once you have the southbound and the Ellie Focus equipped, your main goal is to just pump out as much damage as humanly possible, while also maintaining a relatively moderate ES pool. You might think that 5.5k is a little bit low, probably is a little bit on the low side, but you can honestly get by with the disc bot and the strength stacker. In order to pump out the most damage possible in a six-man party in a T19 5 orb delirium map, you pretty much have to go to Eternity Shroud. This item is super broken for a lot of reasons. And if you're not familiar with Eternity Shroud and how it works, I can try and give you a quick breakdown. So the main line that we're interested here is gain 5% of elemental damage as extra chaos damage per Shaper item equipped. So it is super important that all of your items are Shaper items, except for one, because we are not going to be utilizing the set bonus, which is ignoring chaos resistance. And the reason for that is we have a curse bot, which is cursing the enemy's chaos resistance negative. So if you actually complete the set bonus, it's a damage loss. So every single item here is Shaper minus the Wand, which is a Crusader item. This gives you a lot of gain, and the reason it's really broken is because of conversion mechanics.
mechanics. Penance Brand is a Fizz spell, so it's affected by the gain mod of Hatred. It's also affected by Zealotry. And what happens with this chest is you aim to get a lot of conversion from a few places. Penance Brand, as you can see here, has innately 50% Fizz converted to Lightning. Additionally, since we don't have access to our glove slot, we need to put Fizz to Lightning in our links. This gives us the other 50%. So right now, we're converting 100% of our physical damage to Lightning damage. We are also wearing two called the Brotherhoods, which are catalysted to give us 48% of Lightning damage converted to Cold. So now, we're converting 100% to from Fizz to Lightning, and then 96% from Lightning to Cold. Additionally, we have Cold to Fire in our links, which is converting 60% of the Cold damage to Fire damage. Now, if you're not familiar with Eternity Shroud, you might be asking, why are you getting so much conversion and what does it really do? And the reason is that Eternity Shroud, this gain mod, 5% of elemental damage is extra chaos damage, gains that elemental damage at each conversion. So when I have 100% of my physical damage converted to Lightning damage, it then gains gains all of that lightning damage as chaos damage. Then the next step in the calculation is all of that damage gets converted to cold damage and all of that cold damage is then getting the gain mod once again and getting gained as chaos damage. And then one last time, a portion of that cold damage is being converted to fire damage and then once again being gained as chaos damage. You can begin to see how this really starts stacking up the damage. You can rely on your aura bot for a lot of the gain mods such as hatred and a lot of more multipliers from wrath as well as all of the flat damage which you can get from anger and smite. So really this build is just stacking up all of the gain mods and the aura bot is providing all of the flat damage and a lot of more multipliers from zealotry, hatred, and Wrath. The Orobot is also providing most of your flat damage. And that's kind of the basics of the build. You get an Eternity Shroud, you use a Fizz spell to convert it, and then you start gaining it over and over and over again. Therefore, your damage just skyrockets into the hundreds of millions when you're in a party. Also, don't forget the Wand Craft, which also works in a similar way, which is gaining non-chaos as extra chaos. Now that you understand the basics of the build, you can begin to talk about the tree and the gearing. The build is CI, since we don't want our carry dying to a lot of chaos damage in T19 Delirium as it can be very dangerous. We are still opting to go Assassin even post nerf as we don't really care too much about the movement speed that the build lost. I do think that Assassin will still pump out the most amount of damage possible as the multi and power charge nodes didn't really get touched and multi is something that's a little bit hard to get these days especially on a build like this. A few highlights of the passive tree is that we're using a melding with energy from within to get a lot of ES. Obviously, you're taking a bunch of power charge nodes because you're an assassin. You're also taking this multi per power charge nodes, which gives you a bunch of multi alongside the deadly infusion node, which gives you a bunch of multi per power charge. As for the cluster jewels, you can either opt for two voices or two larges. The voices is obviously a little bit uh, upper end, but you can get a little bit more tankiness from the energy from knots as well as a little bit more damage from the brand loyalty but it's a little bit harder to pull off the larges are a pretty good substitute and just getting any generic amount of elemental damage and then just right into these medium notables will be just fine you do once again need one single holy conquest which gives you the effect that the brands will jump every 0.3 seconds and then we're honestly just taking a bunch of brand loyalty grand designs and remarkables remarkable is the worst out of the three nodes but mainly we do want a bunch of brand attachment range we want to be able to off screen stuff while we're culling and the attachment range is one of the most uh, important stats to be able to do that. This makes it so your brands can pretty much off screen and it just provides a more fluid play style when you're culling in a group. And then obviously for the smalls, it's just energy from knots. It should be pretty straightforward from there. Obviously this small cluster jewel can look a little bit stupid. Uh, we just didn't really get to a high enough level on our carry. Uh, if you're pushing level 98, 99, something like that, you could definitely jam that last medium in here. We just didn't really get to that level before we stopped and heist league. One other thing to note here is the Thread of Hope position that is over by Templar. This is extremely strong for a few reasons. Uh, Divine Fury, some people don't take this, but I think it's a pretty good note to take if you're in a party. Uh, it just gives you gain, fizz as fire. Um, Divine Judgment is a huge 50% increased elemental damage. And then finally, Divine Wrath is another gain mod, 5% as extra lightning damage. This is just super efficient. It's a great Thread of Hope spot. I recommend you try this out. I think that about sums it up for the passive tree. We can move on to the gearing options of this. 
this character. As for the mandatory stuff, obviously, Eternity Shroud, Southbound, two Call of the Brotherhoods are all mandatory. The two weapons you can use are either rare wands or void batteries. Void batteries are a great alternative if wands aren't super available, but keep in mind you will have to use a trash to treasure on the void batteries or chance them yourselves to get it to be a shaper to get every single ounce of damage out of Eternity Shroud. Void batteries can be great early on, but can be easily beaten with rare wands, especially with harvest crafting in the picture. As for the rares, you can either opt for a ton of defense like we have on this hubris 342 which is huge we also got a penance brand enchant which is super nice it is unfortunately a warlord item so we lost a bit of damage but our damage was super overkill so we decided that it was probably okay losing that five percent gain mod as for the defenses here we had some boots with some mega resistance and this is something you can look to fill out your resistance slot two tones are also super viable here i'm assuming with harvest back in the game it's going to be a lot easier to craft resistance stuff stuff like this with the change resistance craft being so ubiquitous. The amulet slot is where you can get a lot of damage. To be honest, in our party, our damage was so overkill that we didn't need to itemize offensively on this character. Basically, Eternity Shroud just carried the damage and we were one or two shotting, uh, you know, a five orb Kosas in a T19. Offensive mods to look out on the amulet are plus level of all gems multi and gain mods are obviously things you want to look out for and then personally we opted for just a super defensive crystal belt with a lot of resistance as we felt our damage was super overkill we just decided to opt for the defensive crystal belt and when you're absolutely dumpstering t19 5 orb delirium maps that's a good sign you can probably build a little bit more defensive as for the flask setup you do want an enduring mana flask as it's sometimes hard to keep up all of the brands as they do cost a lot of mana this build wasn't quite crypt capped even as an assassin so we did have a diamond flask this might not be necessary if you can reach the amount of crit necessary using harvest crafting it's Ziri's promise is also super obvious because it gains a lot of that fizz and ellie damage as chaos taste of hate is also a super great defensive and offensive flask letting you take some of that damage as ellie which is a great defensive layer also gaining more fizz as cold and then uh last but not least the alchemist of adrenaline i'm sure everybody's going to be equipping that one as for the gem setups this stuff is pretty straightforward this is just numerically what's going to be the best amount of damage for you there are a few things regarding the reservation setup that i can talk about you can use a herald of ash which has a gain mod on it you gain 15 percent fizz as fire which is a nice damage bonus and the herald of ash won't proc because you're not killing anything additionally you're going to want to vault discipline for yourself so you can heal this skill is very good you definitely want to copy this for yourself on demand healing and then finally because there isn't really much else to reserve you can slap slap on an arctic armor there isn't really a whole lot else you can do and then obviously you are going to want your own discipline just so you can bump up your solo es pool a little bit when you happen to not be in range of the aura bot or disc bot last thing regarding this build is going to be the leveling now i think you really have two choices regarding transitioning into this build if you're just going to be mapping you can play storm brand independence brand from the very start of the game however our group personally wants bossing capability so we are going to be rolling a saboteur going ball lightning mines and once we're finished with the atlas we're going to be respecking a full respec independence brand assassin both of these builds storm brand and ball lightning saboteur are super super ubiquitous i'm sure you can find any generic guide that'll do a better job of explaining the basics of those builds than i can so i would follow literally any number of guides that are telling you to go ball lightning sab or storm brand assassin which are very solid builds if you want the single target capability, go Sab. If you just want the map clearing capability, go Stormbrand Assassin. Although the Stormbrand Assassin will probably feel a little bit worse after the nerfs, I would lean towards going Saboteur, do a strong league start with Mines, and then respec into Penance Brand later on when you have a little bit of cash on you. The problem with playing Penance Brand from the very start of the game is that Penance Brand is obviously reliant on having a lot of cast speed, which means you need a lot of gear. The build doesn't really start to feel good until you hit a certain breakpoint of cast speed, and that's when the build will start to do a lot of damage so i definitely recommend against going penance brand early on until you get a certain threshold of gear that you feel comfortable with respecting into now there is one last thing we have to address and that is how do we adjust this build for smaller party sizes this is clearly optimized for having a six-man organized party with all of the moving pieces 
but there are a few adjustments you can make in smaller group sizes of five and four to make this build viable while getting a similar amount of MF. Now, the first thing I would recommend is that you not go a culling setup unless you have at least a five man. You can get away with culling in low tier maps if you're a four man, but if you're planning on doing high tier delirium, I would not plan on culling if you're not five or six. If you're in a five man, this build honestly would not change at all. Basically, you're just going to be losing out on the strength stacker. You're going to be losing a little bit of ES. You're still going to be getting a decent chunk from the disc bot as well as a ton of defenses, but the build is virtually the same for a five man. If you are a four man, you'd be running a carry or a bot, curse bot, and a disc bot. Now, instead of putting on a bunch of MF on a dedicated color, you're instead going to have to wear some of these MF pieces on the penance brand carry. Now, obviously, if you're not culling, there is zero reason to use southbound, which is an easy replacement for Sedimas. Great, we got the Sedimas on. Here comes the quant. Then the next easiest piece to throw on would be gold worms. Gold worms go on. After that, you can look to either get a Biscos or a quantity roll on your amulet. I would lean towards getting a quantity roll on your amulet as all of the other stats are super important if you don't have a huge group size to offset all of those stats you're missing. From there, you can replace your wands with a Wind Ripper. I know it sounds kind of stupid, but Wind Ripper does indeed work with spells, and you can get all of the MF because you are doing some amount of cold damage. You can get a Rarity Roll on your helmet. Your belt obviously has two choices. If you're expensive, you want to use Headhunter, you can use that, or you can use a String of Servitude with the Item Quantity mod to get 15% of quant of items found. And this is really the most MF you can fit on this build. You might find that you're damage is still overkill on a build like this. Depending on what tier map you're doing, how high of a tier, how many delirium orbs you're doing, you might find that it, you're able to drop the call of the brotherhoods and put on pariahs or venters. Just know that the rings are the most substantial gear slot for damage and dropping these for MF is going to cut your damage almost in half or more. So make sure that these are the last things that you're unequipping if you're trying to squeeze in an MF. This build, just like this, will work for a 2, 3, or 4 man. And because Penance Brand is so stupid, with Eternity Shroud, you'll have almost overkill damage on anything you're trying to do. But yeah, I think that about sums up most of the basics of the Penance Brand character in regards to farming in a party. If you guys do have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. I'll try to get to you as many as I can. Once again, I do stream on Twitch. We stream every league start. The link is in the description. And once again, I'm Snap, and thanks for watching.